Hey everybody, today we are on the corner of Cedar Street and Broadway and we're going to be doing a full and all-inclusive walking tour of Wall Street. But I wanted to start off on the corner of Cedar and Broadway because right here you have Zuccotti Park. And you might remember back to the 2008 financial crisis when it sparked the Occupy Wall Street protest movement. Yeah, that's right. It started right here in this park. Now there's an interesting documentary series. Uh, it's actually a mini docu-series that was created by Reason TV, hosted by Peter Schiff, who is the CEO and founder of Euro Pacific Capital and Euro Pacific Bank. I'm gonna go ahead and link that docu-series in the description. It's called I Am The One Percent, and it was filmed right here. So after you had the housing crisis, after all the bankers crashed the global economy, you had this big uprising called the Occupy Wall Street protests, which kind of, you know, morphed into more of a uh, crazy socialist movement. Um, but we won't kind of get into that on today's tour, but check it out. Happened right here, lots of history right here at Zuccotti Park. So let's go ahead and get started on this walk. We are now on Broadway. But before we make this right and go all the way down to Wall Street, I wanna point out a notable building. And this is the Federal Reserve. So we'll take a quick pit stop or a detour. And we'll check out the Federal Reserve. Also very close to One World Trade Center, as well as the 9/11 Memorial Site. We're now headed over to Nassau Street, and quite funny enough, uh, in two days, today is March 18th. On March 20th, we are going to be hearing from the Federal Reserve, specifically Fed Chair Jerome Powell as they do their FOMC meeting, which stands for Federal Open Market Committee meeting, where they set the pace or the tone of monetary policy in the United States. Currently, if you're watching this video, it's 2024, March 18th, and the Fed funds rate is currently in a target range of five and a quarter to five and a half percent. Looks like we are gonna get another pause in the hiking cycle on the 20th. So here you have it, guys. This is the Federal Reserve. Most of the world's gold deposits are in this building right here, about two stories underground on the corner of Liberty and Nassau Street. And the Federal Reserve has their own police force. You may think because Federal Reserve has the name Federal in it, that it is a government organization. It is not. It is a, it is a private entity. Uh, it operates completely separate from the government. So if you think about the two types of monetary policy, or two types of policy, you have number one, monetary policy, which is set by the Federal Reserve. And then you have fiscal policy, which is our government spending. So here you have the main doors of the Federal Reserve and the Federal Reserve Police. All right, let's get back on track here. We'll go back to Broadway, we'll make this left, and we will start the complete walking tour down Wall Street. We're gonna see a lot of notable buildings. We're gonna be talking about a lot of the changes that have been going on down here, particularly from a office standpoint to residential, and much, much more. Cedar Street and Nassau. We're gonna make this right. That's gonna take us back on Broadway. Then we're gonna make another left. 
and continue all the way down until we see Trinity Church. back on Broadway. You have this truck double parked here. It's making it very difficult to see. officially made the left on Broadway. We're about to pass Thames Street, then Pine Street, and then we will be at our destination, Wall Street. Made it to Trinity Church. This is the official start of Wall Street. It's a really incredible place down here. Now you can go inside Trinity Church, you just have to go through all the metal detectors. And you could even tour the graveyard here. It's a huge, huge graveyard. That's how you'll know you're at the very beginning of Wall Street is because you'll be right at the Trinity Church. And then if you walk straight down here, it'll take you all the way to the end as well as South Street Seaport. 
But I want to start off the tour talking about this big building right here. This is One Wall Street, and you could look it up on StreetEasy.com or Zillow. This is the largest office to condo conversion in the city's history. Now, the developer that completed this project is Harry Macklow. You've probably heard of him from building 432 Park Avenue, which is one of the most luxurious office, well, not office buildings, <laughs> residential buildings uh, on New York City's Billionaire's Row. That sits right on the corner of 57th Street and Park Avenue. And they've made ultra luxury condominiums right here. There's over 580 units in the building. It has an indoor swimming pool. It has even an indoor kind of office working space. So you don't even have to go to the office. You can just work from your building. They have gym, a private restaurant for the residences. I mean, so much stuff. And you even have a Whole Foods in your building. So check it out. The address again is One Wall Street. And this is the largest office to condo conversion in the city's history. You're right next to the four and five trains. That'll take you up down up, or uptown in the Bronx or to Brooklyn. Okay, one more look at Trinity Church. Lower Manhattan just has such a different type of architecture than Midtown. A lot of it is original Art Deco. And you'll notice that even more as we head down further into Wall Street. Behind one Wall Street, you have the New York Stock Exchange. Unfortunately, you'll see that it's all barricaded off. After 9-11, they've closed this down to the public. So unfortunately, only if you work in the stock exchange, or you have something to do here, they'll let you in, but it's pretty much all closed off. Many people think that the New York Stock Exchange, there's tons of trading activity going on. There's floor traders, you know, running around screaming and yelling and, you know, kind of how it was back in the day. It's really not like that anymore. Now, yeah, there is market making that goes on and trading that goes on down at the floor of the New York Stock Exchange, but not really like what it used to be. It's almost like a TV studio for CNBC, mainly because of the internet, right? Due to algorithmic trading and the like, you don't need to be on the physical street of Wall Street or at the New York Stock Exchange to do business. So if you've ever read the book, Reminiscences of a Stock Operator by Jesse Livermore. It talks a lot about the bucket shops. Now, back in the day, right, 1920s, leading up until the stock market crash, 1929, they were, these were all individual broker dealers down here, and you would go and trade in the bucket shops. But as technology progressed, you know, if you're a big uh, hedge fund or just an individual proprietary trader, you don't need to be down here. And a lot of the investment banks have actually migrated to Midtown Manhattan. So I really consider the Wall Street of New York Park Avenue. From 42nd Street to 59th Street, you have a very high concentration of investment banks, family offices, and hedge funds. I should say most notably, on Park Avenue right now being constructed is the 270 Park Building which is going to be the brand new office tower of J.P. Morgan Chase. All right, this is the very front of the New York Stock Exchange. And it looks like they are showcasing Elf Beauty, ticker symbol ELF. 
that's actually been a top performing stock trading near all-time record highs elf all right so we have the New York Stock Exchange right here but we're gonna continue down Wall Street and from a little bit further away we'll be able to see Federal Hall which is where George Washington was inaugurated but unfortunately the building is going to be going under extensive renovation and they are fixing the entire facade of the building so if we turn around you're going to see this perfectly centered view of Trinity Church as well as Federal Hall you can see all the scaffolding pretty much wrapping around the entire building. You can see the George Washington statue. Unfortunately, it's gonna be over the entire building for 10 years. Apparently the facade of the building was in extreme disrepair. This is the Trump building at 40 Wall Street. A lot of these buildings that we're passing right now are conversions to condos and apartments. So there's a lot of rental apartments here on Wall Street. A lot of people live here, uh, which is interesting. You really wouldn't think that. Most times when a tourist comes down to Wall Street, they think there's a lot of financial people, you know, doing business, trading stocks. On the physical street of Wall Street, almost none anymore. Street and Wall Street you can get the two and three trains that'll take you uptown or to Brooklyn Bank of New York, founded in 1784. Architecture is quite stunning on this building. Deutsche Bank, which is a major German bank, German investment bank, and they are no longer here anymore either. Deutsche Bank has now vacated this property, and they are now uptown, taking over the old Time Warner Center. still see a little bit of the old logo here at 60 Wall. I believe what they're going to be doing here is a complete gut renovation and making this either a hotel or condos. 
But it's interesting to know that this is where Deutsche Bank was. This was the last standing, really major investment bank on the physical street of Wall Street. If you make this left on Hanover Street, it's gonna run you right into Hanover Square. There's a really good bagel shop over there called Leo's Bagels. It's really good. In the distance, you can see Brooklyn Heights. Across the water. We're coming up on Pearl Street. Now we've been talking about how a lot of things have been getting converted into condos away from office. Now this building right on the left here is now the Wall Street Hotel. This used to be offices and retail and it's been fully repurposed into a beautiful luxury hotel. Again, it is called the Wall Street Hotel. It's in between Pearl Street and Water Street, directly on Wall Street. Beautiful architecture, really, really amazing. Fun fact, I, I actually used to work in this building uh, before it was converted into a hotel. But a little piece of Wall Street history for you all. Right here on the corner is where the Buttonwood Agreement was signed. Now you could Google and do a little bit of research on your own about what the Buttonwood Agreement is, uh, but here's the plaque. So in 1792, right here where you're standing, the Buttonwood Agreement was officially signed and executed, establishing the first ever New York Stock Exchange at the time. Interesting, right? So the first ever New York Stock Exchange is right here. They signed the Buttonwood Agreement. And if you're ever lucky enough to be able to get a tour inside the New York Stock Exchange, they have the Buttonwood Agreement on display inside. Um, so if you're ever lucky enough to go in the New York Stock Exchange, just ask one of the staff members to show you the original document of the Buttonwood Agreement. Pretty cool. Now the official address of the Wall Street Hotel is 88 Wall Street. The next door used to be 82 Wall Street. This is now Water Street. If you continue all the way down Water Street this way, this is towards the west side, it's gonna bring you right to the um, Staten Island Ferry, where you can get that for free. It's a really nice ferry ride. This building is 95 Wall Street. Now it looks like a traditional office building in Lower Manhattan, right? These are, these are actually uh, luxury, apartments, rentals. There's a lot of that happening now, a lot of repurposing. Lower Manhattan has the highest office vacancy anywhere in the city. There's just not a lot of need for office buildings anymore, particularly down here. So if developers, if they can make the deal pencil, if they can make it work, they would much rather try to repurpose these buildings and do condo conversions. Or if it's too expensive, they'll just wait for a lot of those demolition costs to come down and they'll just demo the entire building and build brand new housing.
could even see the Hotel Indigo, which is brand new, that they just constructed down here, right next to the Wall Street Hotel. Front Street. This is one ten Wall Street. Right across the street, you have 111 Wall Street, which is another complete renovation, which is going to be commercial. You can see the letters, letters and numbers going up here. I think this used to be city. back in the day. In 110 Wall Street, you have a hotel and a WeWork. And then you have an advertising company called Droga5. In 120 Wall Street. One of my favorite things about working down here and even living down here, if you choose to move to Lower Manhattan, particularly on Wall Street. More broadly, the financial district. If you walk all the way to the end, you have waterfront. You can take the ferry, which will bring you right here. It also takes you to Brooklyn. You have stunning views of the Brooklyn Bridge, all of Brooklyn Heights. And if we turn this corner to the left, you're gonna see the brand new South Street Seaport. You have these beautiful dedicated bike lanes which will take you all the way around the island of Manhattan. I mean, look at how gorgeous this is. It's beautiful. You also have a dog park. I'll switch to the wide-angle camera lens. You can come down, have a seat, and overlook the beautiful views of the Brooklyn Bridge and the Manhattan Bridge. So there's so many things to do as these developers are converting these office towers to condos. People are like, oh, what am I gonna do in Lower Manhattan? Well, there's a lot to do in Lower Manhattan. You know, you have all of this brand new seaport now. You have outdoor space. You have all these dog parks. You have the new tin building with uh, Jean George. You have the ferry. I mean, there's really an unlimited amount of things to do. It's just not a lot of people know about it. And the good thing is there's a lot of free things to do in Lower Manhattan. This is Industry Kitchen right here. They have a beautiful indoor and outdoor dining setup. And you'll notice you have a lot more pedestrian traffic pick up during the spring and in the summertime. But it's really beautiful down here. I would highly, highly recommend it. If you're visiting New York City 
or if you're even looking for an interesting place to move and try out a new neighborhood, maybe you should try out the financial district. There's lots of new things happening here, lots of exciting things going on. Now, if you think the views are amazing right now, imagine how fantastic they would be at sunset if you're sitting on one of these chairs, taking in the views. We'll quickly walk to the tin building to conclude our walking tour because I want to make this point that you, you all as the viewers should really check this out. Uh, another thing, Pier 15, this has a second level which is open to the public. So you can, you know, have a few drinks up there, have a picnic, you know, there's tables, chairs, and you can take in views of lower Manhattan and Brooklyn. And this is all free, you don't have to pay for any of this. This big glass building right behind the Brooklyn Bridge, that is one Manhattan square that was developed by Extel. And Extel did 157 on Billionaire's Row, as well as Central Park Tower. You should write this down. Make sure you check out Pier 15 and walk to the second level during the spring and in the summer it's going to be best and if you walk a little bit more you're going to see the tin building right here during the summer they have an outdoor dining arrangement they have a little outdoor bar but they have an indoor grocery store and on the third floor they have bars, restaurants. I mean, anything you can imagine is in this building right here. The Tin Building by Jean Georges. They also have a restaurant at One Central Park West, which is the Trump International Hotel and Tower that's located on the southernmost west side of Central Park. This is now Pier 16, the New York water taxi. So once you've made this left off of Wall Street, this is now South Street. You have all the Seaport District in here. You have the IPIC Movie Theater. You have more outdoor dining. You have really nice bookshops too, if you're in that, like stationary stuff. And one of my favorite noodle restaurants is right in here. It's called the Momofuku Noodle Bar. It's very good. I used to go to the one in the Deutsche Bank Tower all the time. Maggie, did you get anyone with the Brooklyn Bridge in the background? Uh, I think we're gonna get another place I can do that. Now, if you see the building with the graffiti on it at the top, that doesn't look complete. Well, the city of New York had to halt construction on the building because it was in jeopardy of collapsing. 
I guess the developer didn't do a good job uh, and they cut a lot of corners with the uh, concrete. I'm not sure the full story, but I believe that it wasn't the appropriate uh, PSI on the concrete. So they have halted construction and it's just sitting there. So uh, they claim that if they were to continue construction on it, it could potentially collapse and fall over. So it'd be interesting to see how they're gonna rectify that situation. This is Pier 17. It's sort of like an indoor, outdoor dining, mall, shops. It's a really amazing place. You can see all the way out to the Verrazano Bridge too. This is one of the best views you're ever gonna get in Manhattan. Check this out. They put in these really nice built-in chairs. You can come here, eat lunch, have a drink and enjoy the views of Dumbo, Brooklyn. The two bridges we see in the distance is the Brooklyn Bridge and the Manhattan Bridge. And this development right here, I'll zoom in. This is Olympia Dumbo. This is the best selling condominium in Dumbo. It's a luxurious condominium. It's beautiful. And you can imagine the views it gets of lower Manhattan. Now these windows open during the summer, so it'll turn the indoor dining into more of an outdoor dining. The restaurant right behind us is called The Fulton. Very good, I've eaten here before. And they have these beautiful window seats, but in the summer they have this outdoor dining. So can you imagine dining at sunset? And this is your view while you're dining. It's, it's a really incredible place down here.
coming back to Lower Manhattan. You can see the spire of One World Trade Center. And my personal favorite condo in New York, right here, 130 William, right there. Beautiful building with those arched windowways. So if you guys enjoyed that complete walking tour of Wall Street down to the South Street Seaport and Pier 17, feel free to leave a like on the video and subscribe for more New York City walking tours. Thanks so much for joining. See you in the next one.